Hey, what's up? I'm Liz, this is Plus Say DIY, and today we're we'll taking a look at a project that I just finished up using a thermal camera module. So this is basically a Raspberry Pi thermal camera. You can see on the back we've got the display. There I am, and I'm waving. Uh, if you see the little blue bits on my face, that's actually my glasses. My glasses kind of blocks the thermal reading, so you can kind of see where my eyes are, which kind of gives like a, a creepy effect. Hey, editing Liz here. Uh, while I'm doing post on this video, uh, I'm really noticing the uh, kind of mirror effect that you're getting with the screen of the thermal camera. I am aware of it. I'm hoping to maybe fix it either in software or by reorienting the camera module at some point. But just want to let you know I am aware and hoping to fix it. <laughs> but yeah, so this is a thermal uh, camera module that you can get from Adafruit uh, for fairly affordable. and. Uh, so basically how I've made this project, as soon as I saw the module be released, I thought it would be really cool if you can make it into like a, a portable camera. And you notice that I'm not connected to any wires um, to the wall or anything like that. Uh, so this is definitely uh, looking at it a bit steampunky <laughs> in appearance. Uh, definitely would be considered an alpha version of the project, but still uh, functional. So uh, how would I do this? Um, We've got the thermal camera module, which really only needs four connections on the GPIO of the Raspberry Pi. Uh, and so I basically made a little Pi bonnet, um, not a hat because a hat requires an EEPROM. And I've just got wires going directly to the GPIO. So I've got some protoboard, put on some little low profile he uh, female headers to put the little uh, module into. And then I've got the leads for five volt power, ground, um, SCL and SDA data. Uh, going to the GPIO uh, connectors on the proto board. Uh, so we just got wires going to the uh, GPIO header that I soldered to the proto board, and then that's just sitting right on top of the GPIO pins on the Pi 3. Uh, now, then uh, the screen, uh, it's a five inch uh, diagonal screen, again from Adafruit. Uh, it's got some control boards going on that you can kind of see. Uh, under here, under the Pi. So we've got that all nice and nestled underneath the Pi 3, and then the Pi 3 is receiving that HDMI video data um, from the control board using a flexible uh, and modular HDMI cable that you can also get from Adafruit. So this is really um, kind of an Adafruit project. Uh, now the, the black frame that you're seeing is just that, it's a photo frame. Photo frame that I took the glass and the backing out of, and I'm just using it to house the screen nicely there, and then to hold in the Pi and the various control boards. Uh, and then the only, the way that the screen's getting power is through this USB plug here, connected into the Pi. And the way that the whole thing is getting power is this battery bank on the side here. It's just a cell phone battery bank. It's one that I had. Um, it's a little bit big for the project. You could probably get away with using a smaller one. Uh, but like I said, it's what I had. Um, I think I am gonna do a video in the near future uh, with this battery bank, which is a pretty beefy one. Uh, and then maybe a smaller one, like a really cheap one, and kind of see how um, different tasks with the Pi 3 and the Pi Zero last with a USB battery bank powering it. Uh, so I think that'd be pretty interesting. I've been really impressed with how this project has lasted, considering there's a screen happening and a camera module all running off this battery pack. Uh, I've been using it on a single charge since I started testing with this project. I'm only down 50% of the battery, so not too shabby. Now, you could definitely use a Pi Zero, I think, for this project. Granted, granted I haven't tested it, but it should be enough processing power to run this module and this Python script, because currently we're only using about 20% of the CPU on the Pi 3. And speaking of the Python script, it's really just example code, again, from Adafruit. I've just modified it a little bit so that it will take up basically the majority of the screen and also enlarge the pixels a little bit so you get a little bit more definition. I also changed up the temperature range because I wanted a little bit more variety uh, to be able to grab uh, temps at lower and higher readings so you get a nice color gradient. And um, I'll post my uh, version of the code, like I said, with just those really tweaks, nothing really functional, uh, just uh, basically different um, ratios to look at in the math. Uh, and I'll have that in the Hackster write-up uh, for the project. You'll be able to get the Python code. So to test out, see how this thermal cam is at picking up various temperature things, uh, I ran a couple benchmarks on um, 
my computers and single board computers. So I tested it out with the Asus Tinkerboard, which I find to run pretty hot. Uh, I went to the Android uh, operating system for the Tinkerboard and ran Geekbench for a bit uh, running the CPU test to get some heat readings off of the heat sink on the CPU. I also uh, ran benchmarks for a while on my uh, work phone, which is a Google Pixel, uh, to see the heat dissipation there. What was cool with that too was that the, it left heat behind on the table and that was picked up by the thermal camera. I also did some heat readings uh, on my personal rig Reptar. I ran Furmark, uh, which is a really beefy benchmark for your graphics card. Uh, and it just basically puts it out to max and it's be it's been known to get the temps up pretty high. And what was cool there is you could see a definite outline of my system with a hard cutoff on the top of the case with the thermal print on the camera. So that was pretty cool. I also ran some benchmarks on the Linux rig, which is a rise and build. Uh, temps didn't get that high though, based on the thermal readout. Uh, I probably could have pushed it maybe a little bit more. Or I also know from using the case for my personal rig, it has really great airflow. Uh, and where there isn't a lot happening in the case right now, everything's pretty low profile. It could be that everything's just staying that cool. And then finally, uh, you know, I do live with two adorable little cats and I thought, why not try to get their thermal prints? Um, they weren't that cooperative though. Uh, <laughs> I think they knew that I was trying to have them do something. So they got pretty wired up and started just kind of tearing around. I did get uh, some thermal readings from them, but uh, <laughs> mainly interrupted readings uh, with them, just kind of wanted to play. But overall, I'm pretty uh, excited of how this project came out. It's something that I'm definitely gonna be using in the future, because I do do a lot of benchmarking and look at things like thermal readings. So to have a visual uh, representation that I can get on camera to give an idea of how things are behaving uh, will be really cool. Now granted, it could be a bit more aesthetically pleasing, um, although if you're into steampunk stuff, it definitely kind of has that look right now. Uh, one thing that I think I definitely want to do, just because this is such a simple circuit for the thermal camera on this protoboard, is I think I may make this my first uh, journey into custom PCB, just because we're only sending four signals to the GPIO pin, so it'd be pretty easy to sketch out, and I think would be a good first Eagle CAD project for myself, because that's definitely something I want to kind of jump into, and I think this would be a great start uh, but like I said, I'm going to have a full write-up on Hackster.io in case you want to make this project yourself or you just want to kind of take a closer look to inspire a project of your own. Uh, and that's going to do it for this video. If you liked it, toss me a thumbs up. <laughs> Leave any questions or comments down below. Find me on social media. Links are down in the description as well as a Hackster.io write-up. Thank you for watching. Consider subscribing for more content like this. And until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY.